Hey guys, it's Kenya. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Well, sort of the same. <laughs> it's still makeup, but a little bit different because um, the reason I really started this channel was to be um, a functional channel. Um, I have a lot of friends and family and, you know, co-workers that are always like, what do you do? How do you do this? People that are just starting off and don't know where to start. So I thought it would be a good idea to do a basics 101 series where I just go into each step in detail about what I do when I'm doing a certain part of my face. So for example, today we're going to be doing brows. So I'll go into detail about how I usually do my brows, why I use the products I use, and which brushes I use and why. It's really more of an educational tutorial. Hopefully I can go in and explain in depth so that it makes more sense, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So to begin, these are my brows without any product on them. Um, I mean, I have hair, but it's not a lot of hair there. Actually, I usually get my brows threaded. Um, I've stopped doing waxing because I've had a friend who's had a, a bad experience with waxing. I don't want that to happen to me. The cleaner your brows are, meaning, the more in line your hairs are, the easier it is to get your brow gel or, or pencil or whatever and your concealer on for it to look sharp. You've got a bunch of hairs in the way and you can camouflage it but it's a little harder to do when there's so much hair like below or above and you're trying to clean that up with concealer. I have oily skin and it's very important for me to make sure that I prime my face, let alone my brows. So what I used to do is I used to just prime my brows and keep going. I don't know if anyone saw my um, everyday face tutorial, but uh, it's very important when you're using a pencil to make sure that you have like a foundation that you can draw on easily. And if you've got oily skin and your eyebrows are always slick, it's kind of hard to do that. So I go for this Makeup Forever Step 1 Primer. Um, this is the base mattifying primer, so if you're oily, this is a godsend. I take a little bit, and you know, I am going to end up doing the rest of my face, so I'm just going to use what I would use for my whole face. But if you weren't doing your whole face, you don't, you don't need as much. You probably need like less than half of that, so. I'm going to start down here, and I'm going to put the rest, you're going to put the primer on in the direction that your hair is grow. Excuse me if you guys see me touching my nose. I have allergies. I'm trying not to like have an allergy attack over here sneezing and all of that. All right, and I'm just going to put on the rest of my face. All right, so there are a lot of different products you can use here. Um, my favorite product to use for an everyday look is either the Brow With or I'm not exactly sure what this one's called because I've sharpened it down so much I can't see it. But these are both Anastasia products. Actually, any, anything I use for my brows right now are Anastasia products just because so far that's given me the best definition. I will say that there are there are a few drugstore products I think I used to use before. It was a while ago, probably back when I was in college and I was a little broke. <laughs> but if I'm not using this Brow Wiz pencil, um, a good alternative would probably be uh, the MAC brow pencils that are really kind of just like this except they don't they don't have a spoolie at one end yes if you don't know what the brow whiz is it's a kind of a retractable eyebrow pencil but it's got a spoolie at one end and the brow pencil at the other this one's just a regular version of that although sometimes I feel like the consistency is different here <laughs> just because maybe because it's wider and then there's also a newer pencil that they came out with called the Brow Definer, and I think you can see that. Um, this one has a larger spoolie at the end, and it's got a, a sort of angled pencil, but my only issue with this is it's a lot, I'm not sure if you can see that, it's a lot thicker. It's, it's harder to use this with the shape that it is, in my opinion. So I did buy this, I use it sometimes, but not very often. What I tend to do is I like to outline my brows with these pencils. Like I said, my skin is oily, so sometimes I have an issue just putting pencil on, and I think it's a little more effective for me to use dip brow. Now what I will say is dip brow, 
could be a little bit difficult to work with. You have to use it sparingly, if that makes sense. You cannot use a lot because you can look very, uh, your brows can look very overdrawn <laughs> really quickly. Um, you want to make sure that uh, you don't look angry. <laughs> so I think it's, um, it's, be it's more beneficial to me and it's easier, honestly, to use the pencils to outline my brows first and to use dip brow to fill it in. The pencils might be a good option if you don't feel comfortable using dip brow. It is, in my opinion, a lot harder to use. But let's let's just start here. I'm gonna go in with the brow with. I already have hair here. I know there are some people who don't have a lot of hair um, on their brows for whatever reason. If you do have hair, it's easiest to follow your natural brow shape if it doesn't look crazy. <laughs> but I mean, if you go get your hair like threaded or uh, wax, you know, they'll give you a good shape. But well, your brow should usually start right here. If you angle that through your pupil, this is where your arch would be. And then if you angle that to the end of like your lower lash line here, um, that's about where they should end. So if you don't have hair and you need to make an arch and you aren't sure how, that's a good uh, indicator of how it should look. I know Anastasia does have um, eyebrow stencils for people who might not have a lot of hair and need to make an arch, um, but I want to I want to stress that if you're using those eyebrow stencils, try to make sure that they they sort of follow that rule that wherever the arch is on that brow stencil, that it's going to give you that same sort of arch, like beginning at at the sort of crook of your nose and then through your pupil for the arch and then ending where your lash line line would follow. So as I said, you're probably gonna try to bring it to where that crook of your nose is. I hope you guys can see this. And I, I like to use short strokes and I really bring it just right under where the hair is. If I'm drawing and I notice like maybe at the top or the bottom that the hair is inconsistent, like there should probably be a few hairs there that are missing. I know that that's an area I need to fill in. Now if you have too much hair, you kind of need to find like the most consistent line of hair and say there's, there would be hair below here. I would know that that's, that's where I need to apply some concealer to cover that up as much as you can at least. Or pluck it, pluck it's always the best idea. <laughs> okay, so you see I started at the crook of my nose, arched through my eye pupil, and then we're ending where under our lash line would follow. For natural, for more natural brows, so <laughs> I kind of do like the box brow where it kind of starts and then it ends and it's not really a gradient. But for more natural brow, you're gonna wanna start a little bit inwards at the top brow because you're going to make the appearance of the hairs at the front and if you can't necessarily make the appearance of the hairs it, it it's going to be a little bit of a gradient not too much of a gradient you want to make sure that because I noticed a lot when um, some people do sort of try to create that gradient gradient and that's what I want to get away from where you create too much of a gradient and it kind of looks like you've got one big unibrow. That's exactly what you don't want to do. So same deal. Just following my hairs. And you can see where I said that little dip was. I just kind of followed the lines of where there was hair. I'm going to do the same thing to the other brow. So another thing you also want to make sure is I'm pretty sure that this brow might be a little bit less wide than this brow, so I want to make sure that I'm making up for that difference. And I mean, I'm sure you guys have heard this plenty of times before, they don't need to look exactly perfect. Your brows are sisters, they're not twins. That doesn't mean have one up here, we'll have one down here, but <laughs> it means don't worry about making them look so super perfect. Because if you see someone with natural, naturally full brows, most of the time they don't look exactly the same. Okay, 
I like using um, a larger spoolie than what's on the, and by the way, this is a spoolie if you don't know this little thing for your brow. I like using this the larger spoolie. I'm gonna go in with my dip brow now. Um, this is the brush I use. It's the MAC 208 brush, but honestly, any angled eyeliner brush that's thin, so don't don't go using like one of those. Like I noticed Elf has one like this, but it's a lot thicker. You need it to be thin. And you know what? Another example of an eyebrow brush you can use is the Anastasia brush, the number 12. I think they sell one that's also called number 14. Um, honestly, I don't know the difference, but I'm, I'm sure they're the same thing um, from what I've seen at least. If anyone from Anastasia knows different, please leave a comment below to let people know. So this is what I use for dip brow and concealer. The darker one is obviously dip brow, the lighter one is obviously concealer. I like to keep them separate because um, you know it's hard to get on a lighter concealer after you've been using something darker. For your brow color, I suggest you use whatever is closest to what your natural hair color is. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the middle, a little bit before the arch, and I'm just going to stroke this in. And we're going to go towards the edge. I'm taking, I'm sorry, mine is almost done. I'm taking my brush and I'm sort of dragging it very lightly from one of those piles of uh, dip brow there. And I do my eyebrows first, just because, like I said, when I have I have oily skin and I need a drier base, <laughs> if that makes sense, a drier foundation on which to draw to draw my brows. So um, it helps that I don't have my foundation, etc., on before I do this. You are gonna want want to wipe the side of your brush off at the edge of your pot, and I think the easiest thing to do is sort of draw lines, very thin lines, angled towards where the direction your brow is going. So I'm doing my right side here. My brow hairs are angled to the right a little bit here. If you've got some straight ones, you know, you can make that too, but I don't really have any. So you just wanna angle it that way. I think you can see that a little bit angle the brush the direction that our hairs are growing and make some very small hairs and honestly if you don't feel comfortable doing this with dip brow or if you don't feel comfortable using dip brow at all you can fill in your brows with whatever a, a brow is brow definer any one of these and and then continue at the next step when I start using concealer this is just for anyone who might want to use the dip brow um, which in my opinion kind of stays on a little bit longer and this is a good beach product <laughs> now if you have filled in with either of those items the dip brow or the um, brow whiz or any other uh, eyebrow pencil you're going to want to take a larger spoolie or any spoolie but you know a larger one works better in my opinion and you're going to want to go from the front of your brows and sort of make that gradient. I just want to say the importance of starting your brows right here and right here where the crooks of your nose are um, because had I started them closer than that and tried to make a gradient I would have the appearance of a unibrow right now and that is in my opinion not very cute. So now we're gonna clean them up. We have our brows on. They don't look as perfect as they could. My MAC Studio Finish Concealer in the color NW40. Um, I also have this, this MAC Concealer um, palette here. It would help if you had a concealer that is one shade or a few, maybe one or a few shades lighter than your skin tone, and then one that is the same color as your skin tone or you could use foundation, but I find that it's easier for me to control where the concealer goes with these thicker concealers than it is with the liquid concealers 
or those LA Girl Pro concealers. Those are nice, they look great, but in my opinion it's easier, it's a lot easier to use like a pasty concealer than it is to use um, a liquid. You can use liquid, I've seen people do it and it shows up great. Um, if you have a very steady hand, it's a lot easier for me to use this. So I'm going to go in with the um, lighter tone concealer under my brows. Um, people do it above and below. You just want to make sure that you're not going to create a halo effect around your whole brow. So I'm going to start with the lighter below and I'm just going to try to use one that's more my skin tone or closer to my skin tone above. And honestly what I do is I just lay my hand on my face and I use, you can see the way my brush is angled here, and I just use the edge. Alright, and after I have sort of made a whole line under, I'm going to angle the brush the same way and just go on top of where the concealer starts and drag it downwards. Because if I left it like that, it would be a lot harder to blend, especially when I put my eyeshadow on or when I put my rest of my foundation on if I'm not wearing eyeshadow for the day. Start to finish my brows probably take me about 20 minutes. So if this is a routine you're gonna be doing every day, I think you wanna make some time for this. I like to have my brows defined all the time. I'm doing the same thing except my arm is kind of over here. And I'm angling my brush and I'm sort of leaning it at the, I have to bring it up so I can see. And I'm angling at the top and just if you really want them super sharp, you just have to go over a little bit of the line you need, being sure not to make it very, like, your brows a lot skinnier than you had them, but to make sure that it's very clean. I'm going to go, I'm going to bring my arm, and I'm going to angle it this way and turn, <laughs> if this makes sense, if you can see all of this, this is what I'm doing, this is how I do my other brow, because I cannot work with my left hand, like, <laughs> if you want to see this whole brow disappear, ask me to do this with my left hand. You know what, that should be a challenge. I should tag somebody in that. I'm going to do that challenge, and I'm going to tag my friend Shirley, and she's going to do it too, hopefully. We'll see. Do your makeup with your left hand. Okay. Did somebody already make that? The arch there. And we're going to bring it down. And I like mine to come to a point. You don't have to. But I think it looks good. <laughs> so, remember when I said that issue about having a sort of unibrow? You can see that more when you've sort of made like a line for your concealer. If you can see closely, you can see that my concealer comes all the way out here and then starts all the way out here and then my eyebrow starts that gives more the appearance of a unibrow to me and I think you can see what I mean right in the middle of here because it's kind of like your brain <laughs> your eyes are making up for what's not there by just because you it can see like a shadow so it's like oh there might be a unibrow there to combat that is I'm going to take a fluffy brush this one's as you can see a little bit fluffier. I think this is the one that came, yep, this is what came in my Naked 3 palette, if anyone's wondering. And I kind of blend that concealer out right there in front. And then I'm also going to go back to the concealer I put recently and I'm going to blend that all out as well. You know, you can do above. To clean up a little bit more, I use the Anastasia Beverly Hills, you cannot see it, <laughs> but it's the uh, clear brow gel. Sometimes I've got a stray hair that's sort of sticking down. Brush up a bit and then brush over. You're not going to press this very hard against your brows that you just so nicely made because you don't want to have to go back in and fix all of that. So we've come to the end of Brow Basics 101, <laughs> part of uh, my new series for um, giving some basic instruction on doing different parts of my face. 
I hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for part two. I'll see you guys in my next video.